The following program has been sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions. What does Christmas look like on Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles? What does Christmas look like for those who are poor and needy, hungry and homeless? Well, I can tell you what it's gonna look like this year, and it has for 75 years because of God's faithfulness and because of your generosity. It's gonna look like this, toys for children and plenty of food and blankets and other products for those in need. Why? Because first, God loves people. He loves the poor, he loves the needy, he loves all of us. And so God is going to continue to provide. And then he uses you, our partners, to help with all of this. There are race cars, there's dolls, there's Legos, there's all kinds of games, there's a, a, a science kit. So many things that can bless a child in need. And because of your faithfulness, with $15 you can provide a Christmas blessing of toys for each child. Each gift of $15 will help us bring Christmas and the hope of the Christmas child Jesus to children in need. And then your gift of $25 helps us with food boxes. You know, we get to give rice and beans and cornflakes, cereal, all kinds of great things. There's canned goods that we have that we're going to give about 12 in each box and all of it is just blessings for the children and the families. Will you be a part? Today for $25 you can provide a box of hope or toys for children. This Christmas will be a Christmas to remember for everyone in need because of your generosity. God bless you. Sometimes it takes history a long time to reveal where you get your strength. Well, here we are in the city of Coachella, and it's really just uh, about a week or so until Christmas, and the needs continue to grow and grow and grow and grow some more. But thanks to God and your generous support, standing and partnering with us after 76 years, we continue to reach more and more from Skid Row to the Coachella Valley and everywhere in between. You know, this year has been really difficult, but God continues to be faithful, faithful to his promises, that he loves us, that he'll always be there for us, that he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. But it's been challenging times. Families today are driving up to get bulging boxes of food, fruits, vegetables, dairy, and it's all provided because God cares about the needs of people. We're here and I'm about to walk by Pastor Richard and Pastor Richard and all of his volunteers and church are here to distribute food and to care for these people. And I'm so grateful for the Pastor Richards here in Coachella and this valley and all the pastors that are going from town to town and city to city to help us to distribute hope and love to people in need. You know, you saw I had my mask on and and, uh, and, and we wear our masks, we social distance. As they come through, we have them pop their trunk or we open their back doors and we put the food in. And so there's not a lot of contact. You know, the city, the state, the governor, I mean, everybody has said, you are an essential business. You know, I wrestle with that because for those same entities to call my girl who cuts my hair at times not an essential business or others it you know it's hard but i can tell you this i know this people need food people need hope 
and people need the love of Jesus. And we've continued since this whole pandemic has started and we will continue every single day to declare and demonstrate the love of Jesus. You know, as we're a week before Christmas, I'm, I'm just reminded of God's faithful promises to us. And one of the things that I love the most is just knowing that God loved us so much that before he even created us, think about this, before God created us, he knew that we as his children, we as human beings, we would lie, we would cheat, we would steal, we would turn our back on God, we would rebel, we would basically have evil hearts and selfish hearts. We wouldn't just be created by him, for him and for his purposes, and then obey him and love him. No, from the very beginning with Adam and Eve, they fell short and they sinned against God and we all sin against God. But yet God in his infinite wisdom and knowledge and understanding of us human beings, he still loved us enough to create us. If you think about that as I have and pondered on that, and, and you really let it sink in for a minute, that a perfect God, an all righteous God, a holy God, it says in the Bible that God is love, that he would create people, us, knowing that we would be selfish and stubborn and, and sin against him, but he still created us. He still wanted to have a people that, that he could not only create, but he could have fellowship with and a relationship with. I mean, how much does God love us? He loves us so much. He loves you so much. And so God, knowing that we would be ones who would mess up and make mistakes at times, he created us in his image and likeness, the Bible says. And then he already had the plan to redeem and to save us. And that's where John 3:16 comes in. He sent his son Jesus to this world to grow up and to die for our sins. But you know, without Jesus being born, without Christmas, the Christ child coming to this earth and being born in that manger, in a stable, we wouldn't have a chance. We would just be sinners and we would end up going to hell because of the consequences of sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But, there's a but in that verse from the Bible, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Even though God knew we would make mistakes and sin against him, God had a plan to save us and give us a chance to know him. We celebrate Christmas, the Christ child, because baby Jesus came to this earth to give his life, to give us all, so that we could have a chance to know our Father and have a relationship with him. And we share that every day with these families. And we share that hope from the Coachella Valley to Riverside, San Bernardino, and of course, downtown, fifth in town, at Fred Jordan Missions every day. We will continue to declare and demonstrate the love of Jesus, not only at Christmas, not only at this season when people celebrate Jesus and the holidays, but every single day. And it's because of your partnership. Stay with us. Christmas look like on Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles? What does Christmas look like for those who are poor and needy, hungry and homeless? Well, I can tell you what it's gonna look like this year, and it has for 75 years because of God's faithfulness and because of your generosity. It's gonna look like this, toys for children and plenty of food and blankets and other products for those in need, why? because first, God loves people. He loves the poor, he loves the needy, he loves all of us. 
And so God is going to continue to provide. And then he uses you, our partners, to help with all of this. There are race cars, there's dolls, there's Legos, there's all kinds of games. There's a, a, a science kit, so many things that can bless a child in need. And because of your faithfulness, with $15, you can provide a Christmas blessing of toys for each child. Each gift of $15 will help us bring Christmas and the hope of the Christmas child Jesus to children in need. And then your gift of $25 helps us with food boxes. You know, we get to give rice and beans and cornflakes, cereal, all kinds of great things. There's canned goods that we have that we're going to give about 12 in each box. And all of it is just blessings for the children and the families. Will you be a part? Today for $25, you can provide a box of hope or toys for children. This Christmas will be a Christmas to remember for everyone in need because of your generosity. God bless you. Christmas. Christmas time here with David Ramirez and the Narrow Door, Jordan Outreach Ministries, Fred Jordan Mission. And Christmas is such a great time, isn't it, David? Amen. Amen. And I'm excited because this Christmas, there are more needs than ever. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that because of the possibilities of watching God touch more lives than ever before at this Christmas time. I'm also really saddened by it because of all the tragedy and all of the despair going on, and the hopelessness because of this pandemic and all the chaos going on in our world and, and throughout our, our state here in California. But I just wanted to ask you something. What does it mean for those who learn in this time it's better to give than to receive? And what is it like when people realize that there are people coming through our food distributions all this year and will at Christmas? There's people who are gonna come and get toys and food boxes just so they have a toy for their child or a food box for Christmas. And it wouldn't be possible if they didn't come to our events and, and who those people are. Because, you know, some people I still think, think that it's just some poor and needy people. I think so often that we, even myself sometimes, we're driving through a community like the Coachella Valley and we put up walls. We are great at putting up walls. I go back to the south and there's no walls. You, you're driving through a community, you can immediately see needs. Well, right now, needs look different than, than, than at any time that we've ever had. So we had this family that came through, a husband and wife, really, ex the wife's always excited to come out and serve. The husband comes in and he says, I'm just here because my wife told me to, to be here and uh, I just put me in a place I don't have to deal with anybody but I can just load up or something. So I put them in the kitchen to go out and deliver the, um, the boxes of food to these families, right? So I go through, I see this gentleman, he's putting it on, he's being really quiet. He's still excited but he's not, you know, he, this is not where he wanted to be. He'd rather be football or something. So I come in a few minutes later and the gentleman, he's sitting down with his hands covering his face and he's all teared up. And I said, sir, what's, what's happening? What's going on? And uh, he says, I thought this Christmas was about these families. I didn't think this was gonna be about me. And this year, the Christmas store is about me. And he was so, you could just see he was built up. And I said, what happened? And he says, as I'm pulling through the boxes, I'm not looking at anybody's face. I'm just putting them in. And I heard this voice and the gentleman said my name. And I said, well, what happened? He goes, it was my brother. I haven't seen him in 15 years. And I didn't realize my brother was going through these issues. And he goes, shame on me for not connecting. But I thought everybody was good. I thought things were great. And he says, I get a connection with him. I get to have Christmas. I get to have this. Right now, we're seeing volunteers that are coming through our lines that normally they wouldn't. They're the ones that are giving the food. And now they're right. the ones receiving. But to know that we are there and that there's a community behind us, our partners that are, that are blessing us so we can go out and give, it's, right. it's huge. And we need that during this yeah. time. Absolutely. And you know, it doesn't matter if it's Christmas or Thanksgiving or Easter or another holiday. You know, sometimes people don't realize because, you know, you just get in your little world and you do your thing and you're in your bubble. And, but people don't realize that needy people and people who struggle and suffer 
suffer every day, 365 days of the year. And maybe not the same person, maybe, you know, they are lifted out of that. And, and God, God lifts so many people out of not only sin, but starvation and hunger and joblessness and all of those things. But there's always somebody that takes their place because the poor, the Bible says, will always be with us. And so I remember as we were doing an event, I remember a couple who came and I begged them to come. And they weren't real, you know, they weren't really supporters and they loved us and believed in the mission, but they kind of lived behind a wall mm -hmm. in a country club and they didn't, they didn't really think much in how they could make a difference. And they came and I'll tell you, I'll never forget, they served and they watched me share the gospel that Jesus loves people, that Jesus loves the people that were there to receive the food and all the blessings that, that Jesus died for their sins. And it was a Christmas time and, and it was a Christmas event and outreach. And they saw a thousand people stand up. Some, many hundreds came to the altar mm. to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior because they said the greatest gift is not what you're gonna get that's under a tree a Christmas tree, the greatest gift you can take away today. And for you also watching, the greatest gift that we can all receive is the gift that hung on a tree. Yes. And so they were touched by that, how Jesus who hung on a tree is the greatest gift of love that we can receive. And they saw about a thousand people receive Jesus. You may have even been drumming at that event because you were drumming back then in the bands at those outreaches. But the point was, they saw that, they saw Jesus touch people's soul for eternity, mm -hmm. change their life, turn it right side up because it was upside down, took a mess and made a miracle. And then they handed out and they were the hands and feet of Jesus. And I remember both crying, mm -hmm. tears in their eyes. I mean, it moves me because I love seeing God move people, not just the poor who get touched, but those who, who kind of were a little bit oblivious to it. Mm -hmm. And as they handed out the food like we are today, and as they handed out the toys and the blessings, and these kids lit up and it was a Barbie, maybe their only Barbie that year, and the football and the kid would get, and this couple said that this was the most rewarding thing ever to be able to give and to do it in Jesus' name. And not only give toys that would last, you know, a while and food that would only last a while, but also to know that Jesus would last for eternity. Amen. We get to do that every day. And we're doing it through this Christmas time. So what does it mean to you? To be able to partner, to be able to partner like this and be able to expand and to be able to see these families come through, it's, it's, it's exciting. I know that my wife was just sharing with me the other day that growing up, they didn't have a lot. And she knew that she knew when um, her mom was struggling, having a tough time and they would get, because in their, uh, when they would go through lines like what we're putting on, they would only get a hairbrush or some uh, barrettes and things. But she wore right. those barrettes all right. the time because yeah. she knew people were going to, uh, people did this because they they had a love for Jesus or they wanted to be able to give, to give what they had. and. We're able to do that same thing, but we're gonna go beyond just a hairbrush because I tell my kids, hey, if you were to give to a family right now, what would you do and what would you give? And they're giving the same gifts that they want under right. the tree and things like right. that for these families. Because like yeah. you said right now, it's a tough time. Families are trying to decide, do they put gas in their car right now or do they, um, how, how can they get to work or what do they do? And they're buying up toilet paper, things that, you know, what are they, what's the next step? So we're able to come behind these families and work with them and see what their needs are, but go beyond that. And again, to be able to present the gospel message everywhere we go, it's, yeah. it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. And for all of you viewing and watching that support us, and if you don't, hey, jump on board. Be the hands and the feet of Jesus. Help us declare and demonstrate, not just at Christmas, but year round. People have needs, and in Jesus' name, we will continue to reach out and meet those needs, to share the eternal hope of Jesus that Jesus saves, and also to meet the basic needs, whether it's food or blankets or jackets, whatever we can do, we're going to continue to reach those in need in Jesus' name. And with your support and your partnership, 
we will continue to be able to reach more. You know how I say it, I can do a good thing and David can do a good thing and you can do a good thing, but together we can do extraordinary things as Jesus uses all of us as his body to reach more in Jesus' name. And David, that's honestly why our hearts are so bound together. You started with me way back drumming and, and watching us do these things and God then uh, put on your heart to open the narrow door to serve more. But we've realized and we know that we're better together. And that's why if we even look at this truck, the Fred Jordan Mission, the Narrow Door, Jordan Outreach Ministries, all three ministries are on it because they're all Jesus' ministries. And we just are fortunate enough that we get to be a part of it. Together, as we reach out, we will reach more in Jesus' name. And with your help, we will continue to even reach more than we're reaching now in the days and years ahead as people need Jesus. Merry Christmas. God bless you. Join the conversation by connecting with us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. Visit us at social.fjm.org. I'm so grateful today that you are with us and, and watching what we are doing here at Coachella. There's another distribution just down the road. There's all of those being served at Skid Row at Fred Jordan Mission. And you know, we're gonna to continue to do this every day, but I just wanted to take a moment and let you know how much God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die for you. And I've shared that so many times, but you can never overshare it. Remember that Jesus is always there for you. He'll never leave you. And if you don't know Jesus today, that's the point of Christmas is that Jesus was born and he came to this earth to give his life for us so that we could have a relationship with him and our creator, God, our father. You know, all you have to do, the Bible says, is believe and receive and you can be saved. You don't have to worry about what happens after this life. You don't have to worry about dying in your sins with no hope. You see, Jesus is the hope of the world. And there's so much hope right now, even in the midst of these pandemic storms and trials and insecurities that, that people are facing and we're all facing every day, we can always know the hope of Jesus is right there. Jesus is always with you and with me. We never have to worry about him not showing up because he's always there. We just have to reach out to him. Today, if you don't know Jesus, I just encourage you to do what I did when I was eight and then again, you know, in my teens and just recommitted my life to Jesus. Maybe you know Jesus, but you've been away. Maybe you, you know, have just not trusted him fully with your life. Maybe you've never trusted him with your life. Well, I want you to know this. God's got a good, pleasing and perfect will for your life. And he wants to accomplish that, but we have to receive him, the Bible says and it's easy. Just pray a prayer just like this. Dear Jesus, I know that you love me. I know that you died for me, and I know that I've sinned against you. Forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I receive you in Jesus' name. If you just pray a simple prayer like that, you have a relationship with Jesus. You're now reconnected with God, your Creator and all of your sins have been washed away. And now you have promised eternal life. So when we're gone from this earth, we can now know by being a Christian and a believer and confessing our sins to Jesus that we will go to heaven and be with him forever. This Christmas time, don't forget that baby Jesus is the reason we celebrate. That is the reason for this season and the reason is impactful because he came to save the world he came to save you and he came to save me from Fred Jordan Mission from Jordan Outreach the narrow door from the Coachella Valley to Los Angeles or wherever you're watching and viewing from know this we love you Jesus loves you and Merry Christmas stay tuned and I'll show you 
how you can help impact the kingdom of God and touch people's lives one soul at a time. What does Christmas look like on Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles? What does Christmas look like for those who are poor and needy, hungry and homeless? Well, I can tell you what it's gonna look like this year, and it has for 75 years because of God's faithfulness and because of your generosity. It's gonna look like this, toys for children and plenty of food and blankets and other products for those in need. Why? Because first, God loves people. He loves the poor, he loves the needy, he loves all of us. And so God is going to continue to provide. And then he uses you, our partners, to help with all of this. There are race cars, there's dolls, there's Legos, there's all kinds of games, there's a, a, a science kit. So many things that can bless a child in need. And because of your faithfulness, with $15 you can provide a Christmas blessing of toys for each child. Each gift of $15 will help us bring Christmas and the hope of the Christmas child Jesus to children in need. And then your gift of $25 helps us with food boxes. You know, we get to give rice and beans and cornflakes, cereal, all kinds of great things. There's canned goods that we have that we're going to give about 12 in each box. And all of it is just blessings for the children and the families. More rice, more beans, so many things. There's shelf safe milk for the kids and the families, all because they need it. This Christmas, $25, your gift of $25, will build and give a food box to a family in need. And then $15 will provide Christmas and toys for a child. If you wanna do both, $40 will provide a family with food boxes and a child with hope. But don't forget, we also serve Jesus. We give the message of salvation that comes because a baby Jesus came to this earth to die for all of us. Yes, the food will be gone one day, the toys will be gone one day, but the hope that children and families and the homeless can leave with, the hope of Jesus will last for eternity. So no matter what we go through on this earth, we will continue to share the hope of Jesus, the forgiveness of sins that he provides by dying on the cross with those who we share the love of Jesus with. Will you be a part? Today for $25, you can provide a box of hope or toys for children. This Christmas will be a Christmas to remember for everyone in need because of your generosity. God bless you. Please, will you join us in feeding hungry children and their families by phoning today, 844-FJM-FOOD or donating online, fjm.org. That's fjm.org. Or mail your check to Fred Jordan Mission, P.O. Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Please, will you help? The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions.